Hello all, thank you for coming for my conference here at ETAIPI 2020. My name is José Roberto de Obu, and I'm going to present you a brief version of my doctoral dissertation I made in the University of São Paulo. Uh, Priscila Farias was my advisor, and it's about the letterings from architects uh, that worked in São Paulo from 1925 until 1955. I hope you enjoy. At the end of the presentation, I'll put the link for you to download the full version. Thank you. This board illustrates the two kinds of letterings took into account in the research. The letterings that were designed to be part of the building architecture or architectural letterings and the letterings with information of the project. So, these are the main research questions that we sought to answer. Would the letters and letterings present in architectural drawings during the period have repeated graphic characteristics and postures also found in architectural lettering on article buildings in the same period? Would there be any standards in the design of the letters and letterings used by the same architects or office? How the lettering job was done inside the offices? Were the architects concerned with the design and detailing of architectural letterings? How the architectural letterings were detailed? We've, we chose seven architects to, for their research. All of them authored relevant architectural work related to article style. They are Jaime F. Rodriguez, Rino Levy, Gregory Varshavichik, Álvaro Botelho, Elisiário Baiana, Ciciane Silva, and Severo and Vilares. We analyzed more than 400 architectural plans. The 173 most representative were selected and became the corpus of the research. The analysis procedures began with the filling of a form with several information about the project, the letters, and the lettering. A form was filled for each kind of letter found in the architectural plans and each available character was set to form an alphabet. Frequently, more than one kind of lettering was found in a single sheet, so we have a total of more than 400 forms or letterings. Most architects used rubber stamps in their architectural drawing boards. It's possible to retrieve a lot of information from the observation of its design as also the way words are written. For example, here we have two different ways of writing architect. And the one with key and you are after late 30s. So the rubber stamps can provide us with a lot of information of time of the drawings and even the modification of the letter forms. Then we were analyzing also the graphic characteristic of the architectural drawing boards, paying attention on how the graphic composition was arranged, how the drawings and letters were positioned, if margin or guides were used, and also the existence of rubber stamps, signatures, and other details on the boards. The same occurs with the architect's logos, another way of understanding the changing letter forms. As they were made by hand, they changed frequently. And of course, the lettering is present in the architectural drawings that shares the main role in the research with the detailing plans for architectural lettering execution in the buildings. The next step was to build a classification for the various letter forms collected. For this task, we chose Catherine Dixon's 2008 description framework for type forms, and six categories of article letters were defined. The first we call Elementor, because its form resembles the geometric letter forms of alphabets designed by modern typographers and known as elementary or universal. Elementor rounded for the same, but the letters has the distinguishable uh, ending like the A apex and top M and N with a round. 
contrast shows leather forms with different stroke thickness. Solid are for leather forms made from simple geometric forms, generally without counters, very typical of Art Deco. Intersection is for leather forms that shows a kind of deconstruction and intersection of its strokes. And serif, obviously for leather forms with serifs, mainly modern, single line serifs. Then a timeline was constructed for each architect, showing the use of different lettering designs through time. Then all timeless timelines were gathered in a huge infographic where similar leather forms were grouped using the our classification and the leather forms in the same classification were represented with colors and connected across the different architects. It's a very complex diagram that became a plotted print of a, a, a reasonable size. But we made a, after that a simplified version, showing the distribution of the Art Deco letterings in a more schematic way. It's impossible to show the letterings of all the architects in this presentation. I tried to include various of them until, until now, but I would like to present the lettering of work of the lettering work of Severo and Villares with, with a little bit more detail. The firm Technical Office Ramos de Azevedo Severo and Villares has its origin back in 1886 with architect Francisco de Paula Ramos de Azevedo that became the most important engineering and architectural entrepreneur in Sao Paulo at the end of the 19th century. That owned, he owned or had partnership in a range of business in the architecture and construction field. He was also a teacher and helped to found the Polytechnic School of Sao Paulo and transform the local art and craft school in a center of excellence for the formation of craftsmen for the decorative arts and professionals with a supporting role in the architecture and engineering offices. This condition brought to his office the best professionals from these institutions. After his death in 1928, Ricardo Severo and Arnaldo Villares became the leaders of the firm, a period in which Sao Paulo verticalizes and the construction business boomed. In 1940, the Portuguese architect Severo died and the firm continues with the leadership of engineer Arnaldo Villares until his death in 1965. The firm existed until 1980, being the most longest-lived construction office in Brazil until today. In this picture, we see a part of the design team that summed up to 500 professionals, most of them Italian, Portuguese and German immigrants, or its descendants. Until the, death of Ramos, uh, until the death of Ramos de Azevedo, the architectural production of the office was characterized by eclecticism. Most of the Latins were in cursive or round calligraphy, or are nouveau oriented. After that, under Severo and Villares, Latinings were drawn in a wide variety of designs. From the early 30s, the old models began to be replaced by modern-looking leathers, sans serifs, with attendance for geometric art deco. In mid-40s, after Severo's death, Roman leathers become more and more frequent, even in the Severo and Villares logo. In this map, the size of the circles represents the usage of each art deco lettering category. In intersections, some characters shared by two or more categories. The dashed line represents a far connection between categories. Severus and Villares' lettering seems to be largely inspired by some elementary modernist alphabets. However, unlike the geometric purity of modernism, we notice a tendency in the use of alphabets of great visual appeal, obtained by the inclusion of ornamental details or a play with the strokes or proportion of the letters. Typical from Art Deco. This chart shows a sample of alphabets sorted by authoring. 
Most of professionals sign the architectural drawing boards just with their initials. The large diversity of letterings make us believe that the professionals of Severo and Villares had freedom in creating alphabets and, according to reports, it was not a task of a specific professional. All of them were trained to do the whole architectural drawing, including the titles, subtitles and captions. Until 1933, the identification of the Ramos de Azevedo Severo and Villares Technical Office was limited to rubber stamps on the architectural drawing boards. From that year, we started to find the name Severo and Villares drawn on boards similar to a logo. As its, as its execution was manual, the design of the letters varied a lot through the years. Most of them has an article inspiration. And the last one is the form that has prevailed after mid-40s, with the uh, Arnaldo Villares' leadership. With the predominance of the design of commercial skyscrapers, boards with several drawings on the same sheet began to appear, as well as projects with a great amount of detail, which can exceed, exceed more 100 boards. Simultaneously, with the modernization of the architectural lines of the buildings represented, the configuration of the elements present on the drawing boards also evolves and gains new functions. One of the most interesting is the creation of a cover, containing the title of the project, which had the function of housing the set of copies that were part of it. In some occasions, these covers changed their standard form to gain a more distinguished Distinguishable outfit, probably due to a work of relative importance, as in this project developed in 1939 for the Auditorium and Theater of Sociedade de Cultura Artística. As happened in constructed buildings, sometimes the lettering plays a major role as a graphic element on the boards. In this project for Sociedade de Harmonia de Tennis from 1930. 33, we found modernity in the use of light serif in this title and a distinguished lettering. Also, in the same project, this, the lettering used for children's pool is, uh, seems like taken from an illustrated magazine by the fam famous Brazilian graphic artist J. Carlos. Manually drawn letters tend to be unique. or to accord to the principles of the planet architecture. Even in a simple textile factory location plan, one can find rich lettering details. In some cases, the whole drawing evokes a piece of abstract geometric art, but it's just an industrial district settlement plan. In this 1938 neo-colonial style church design, the lettering, positioned centralized beside an acanthus leaves ornamented frame, is set in a kind of traditional Roman letters composition, indicating that the function of the building can also affect the design of the letters and also the lettering. Some lettering seems inspired by typographic fonts of this period. Although none of them seems to accurately follow the design of these fonts, in a project for the municipal stadium, the inspiration seems to have been Futura, but there are significant differences between this font and several characters in this lettering. In another board, a 1939 execution detail of this stadium, the letter seems to have strictly followed Cassandra's before typography, launched 10 years earlier by Debernier and Peignot foundry, except by some small details. Letterings like the one for the headquarters of technical service of coffee from 1934 use a multi-line effect like found, like we can found in two fonts by Rudolf Koch, 1929 Zeppelin and 1931 Prisma. 
Single strokes letterings executed in pencil by the architects of Severo Villares show high skill in tracing with drawing tools. Lines not interrupted, the character limit indicates fast drawing. The same occurs in freehand leather drawing also. Architectural letter detailing is a constant in the work of Severo Villares, as in this drawing of the architectural lettering for a secondary entrance of the city stadium. Real size lettering drawings can be easily found among the boards of a project. This one is for an engraving in an architectural detail for the building of Brazilian Telephone Company, made between 1936 and 1939. The Brazilian Telephone Company initials CTB can be seen along with lightning motifs for this plafonnier ceiling light. So, lettering characteristics changed across the years, reflecting the different phases of the firm until 1928, when Ramos de Azevedo was alive, between 1928 and 1940, with Ricardo Severo, and from 1940 and on with Arnaldo Villares. Traditional calligraphic and cursive by the time of Ramos de Azevedo, for, with form of freedom and geometric art deco with Ricardo Severo, and the sobriety of Roman letters, showing the engineering offices sobriety with big assignments uh, reflecting Arnaldo Mons Villares' conservative architecture. This is the title of my dissertation, Letters and Letterings, Manifestations of Art Deco in Architectural Drawings from Sao Paulo. I would like to invite you to download at this bit.ly address, but uh, in fact it is only a version in Portuguese available. Uh, but there is a lot of images and pictures, very interesting to, 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 to study uh, letterings. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. I'd like to thank Itaipai for the invite also. Thank you. Hey all, that was awesome, wasn't it? So any questions for our... Oh, wait a minute. Am I on? You can hear me. Okay. Oddly, the icons don't show me as being live, so it's a little confusing. You can hear me? Jose, that was great. That was fascinating stuff. Oh, thank you. I'm and a big fan only... of this period, and you did a great job of showing a unique take on it. So um, it looks like we have our first question. Do you know if Jay Carlos and these architects talked, or was it just a visual reference? So like, do they know each other? Where, where is it? In the question uh, oh, okay. thing in the chat. Uh, I, I think that Jay Carlos was a graphic artist. He works for magazines in Rio de Janeiro. And these guys are from Sao Paulo. It's another place. Uh, and he's very famous. The, his magazines probably came to Sao Paulo also. In this period, but I don't think they they know each other personally. Cool. Any other questions? I think my English is better when it's alive than when you have to record it. Your English is fine. Uh, no worries. Very bad. Okay. I don't speak Portuguese at all, so <laughs> you, we made the right call in which language we're using right now. That's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> oh, let's see in the main chat room. Hmm, well, let's see. Anything else you want to comment about the process of preparing this, or? Well, it's a. Uh... It, it was a, a long work. It's, it's almost five years of work since I started this this research, um, and it in, it was made. Uh, I, I have to thank a lot to the uh, library of 
School of Architecture of University of São Paulo that they have a lot of this uh, material uh, 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 is there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I could uh, uh, research on, on most of part because sometimes uh, uh, we have some problems. We have a, a part that is digitalized, but uh, it also depends when it was digitalized. You have very poor digitalization, digitalization from the 19s or something like that. Uh, and now you have some betters. But I, I could put my hands in several uh, real copies of these drawings and some of them uh, originals. Uh, because uh, if you are interested in the lettering, uh, sometimes the 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 reproduction or the digitalized archive don't have enough uh, uh, how can I say enough size enough oh, they're uh, too small the, yeah, the digitized yeah. versions are low res yes low resolution. yes low yeah. res to to uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it's high res but you feel want to see a little detail of a lettering is difficult because it it, it's, yeah, yeah. it was not intended for that you no. Know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is uh, turned the work a lot of. I, I brought a lot of for my home to scan at home with some details and and things like that. Okay, ah, it was lovely. Well, if there are no other questions, perhaps. Oh, wait a minute. Some of these typographic elements has been digitalized as font. No. I have made one one typographic font from one of these letters just for mm -hmm. the fun of, the, of it. And but we are planning now to to make some of them because uh, it's an interesting stuff because you have to uh, you have to create some characters that are not included in the sometimes uh, they they use an alphabet just with the the letters they need for that the, the, the thing you were, was written in that lettering. So sometimes you have to, to imagine how will be some letters that don't do not appear in the in the plans. So uh, but I think we, we are going to 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 I was just talking right now with a, a friend and maybe we are going to make a, 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 a some versions of this. I'm I'm not a type designer. I, I like to to study typography and but I'm not a type designer so I made it it was a a very difficult process for me to to make a, a workable font for for example mm -hmm. yeah well it's even for people who are type designers it's a difficult process so we have one more question in the Q&A channel do you think there's a reason this art yes. deco style was so popular specifically in architecture Yes, I think so. I think uh, first of all, I think it's a it's a it's a modern style, and I think it was when we uh, in the beginning of the twentieth century. I, I think we it was a, a major after the the first war, uh, and people want to 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 start a new era and something new and uh, the modernization was something very important for the people and this architecture uh, brings the, the the geometrization and the, this kind of uh, characteristic for the architecture and in brazil i think uh, um, it, it's also uh, is the same but i think came uh, a, a little bit uh, uh, later some after 10 or 15 years after Europe, for example. And in Brazil, it was very uh, important because it turns to, to, to the, the construction became uh, cheaper because you don't have to hire those, those uh, people who made facades and ornamental stuff. And then oh. we have a... And we have a, a particular art deco here in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, that is very clean because they, 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 uh, the constructors uh, seems a, a way to, 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 to turn things more cheaper. 
Hmm. Also, so it was a, and also it was the style when we are building a lot in the downtown São Paulo, for example. So a lot of buildings became like with this style, and I think in this style there's a special, uh, and, and special attention to the letterings in, in the architecture. Also, mm -hmm. things that after that become less um, not important, maybe for the architects later okay sure well anyone else we may have run out of questions well thank you so much that was really fun and interesting and uh beautiful so okay thank you i really enjoyed it and i'm sure everyone else did too okay okay thank you all thank thanks you all for coming <laughs>